So we had a very illuminating talk and we came to know the different dimensions of uh, social science research and the problems that uh, social science research faces. There is only one hope and the hope is all of you in the sense that you will bring in the rigor, you will be honest and true to your job. If you have taken a scholarship, fellowship, you should be present there, you should be working hard. The scholarship and fellowship should just not be a mean to take money out of public funds. You must be publishing, you must go to the field and collect the evidence, you must explore the possibilities and you must benchmark where do you stand versus others, your counterparts. Also see, are you using the IT techniques there? I think the problem is of communication. Indians have done a lot, but people have not known much of that. They have not known much of that because we have not been tax heavy. We have not been trying to tell people what we have done. So there is a way, I think, to do the things. Before you submit your research, like natural sciences, you must have published all your papers. That was, I think, one of the things. 30 years back, when we were doing our PhDs, our supervisors would never ask us to publish. But the reason given was that if you publish, then somebody would use that and they would claim that it is their work, not your work. Now that came in the way. We had different kind of, we have, uh, we have a different kind of environment. But today environment is, you know, all together something, you know, which is in your favor. You must be publishing, you must use your publications as the sounding board of your research, whether people have something to say on that. I think with this, I think this session comes to an end, because already we have the other session lined up, and we'll see where we can have a talk uh, from uh, sir. And before the last one, the first one is Dr. Swing Mani, the director of one of the leading centers of the access that, uh, Center for Development Studies in Group, Center by Professor K. Rai. And Dr. Sumi Mani is an expert in the area of innovation, creativity, R and D. Uh, he was head of the Center of Genetic Research University at Maastricht. And then he has been all around the world and in time in the all reports from UN and other agencies. Uh, I think that him all have chapters, all have new Obviously, I think copious citations to be here. Dr. Sumi. I request Dr. Sumi. Because still no one is going to know With your permission. Uh, I did this little presentation about three years ago, modified a little bit. This is about Nirvaya. I don't talk about irrelevant downloaded data. Everything what I've done is myself. If you've got 85 PhD students under your supervision, you know what you're doing. From four different countries, not just India. So you have been able to get a lot of people who appreciate you. And presently, I have a very beautiful address. And it's going to end very shortly. I hope so. I only hope so. Uh, I'm on the governing council of ICSSR. I started with ICSR in 1970, small project. 500 rupees. Never crept. Money would come if you have got a research proposal. To be the National Fellow of ICSR was another thing. You think of the awards, you think of the grants, they never freeze. They always have it. The only thing is that you've got to get deserving it. This was something which happened when I was in uh, Lahore at that time, attending an international conference, and there were people who were giving polio vaccine, they were being killed. When I came back to India, uh, this was a often kind of event which changed the whole scenario of Indian people looking at how a rape, a mass rape can take place right in Delhi. And some people gave us the distinction of the rape capital of the world. Many people started not coming to India because of that. And I remember the Korean ambassador to India made a very beautiful statement that the media gave a hype Therefore, people are very scared of visiting India. Korea gets with a very small size of space and places. Much more, many more tourists, but then India gets much less because of many, many reasons. One of them could be the unsafe place. Nirvaya was an unsafe place. 
I do not know, you can't blame the uh, victim. But many people would like to start with it. I would like to say only this thing about it. That for me, Nirvaya was a very personal kind of shock. And I just could not take it the way it happened. Uh, it's something which I'm in Chandigarh. It's a safer place than many other places. But one should never boast of it. The objective of oppression is oppression. It's all visual. I like to speak some of it. The objective of torture is torture. The objective of murder is murder. The objective of rape is the oppression of the spirit and murder of the souls. Nobody could define rape so beautifully. Why talk about rape? We should hide behind. We have statistics. We can talk about the newspaper that tomorrow morning they become only another number. Why talk about rape? Because we are trying to camouflage it. We want to have a very beautiful agitation out of it and out of which people get into the Delhi administration as chief ministers. No, no, no. Rape is a serious issue. It's related to the mindset of the people. This is the data. This is the data which has happened and will keep on increasing in due course of time. My data is up to 2015 because 2016 data is yet to come. It's a very beautiful kind of telling you that rape is not something which we deleted from our consciousness or reality. No, we could not do it. We, we all talked about it. The Prime Minister went all the way to receive the dead body of that girl. There's a very kind of a great emotional response on the part of the individuals as well as politicians, as media people, and when what happened. That is the latest story. This is the chunk. Crime headwise percentage distribution under crime against women. Everybody talks about it. I don't talk about it. This is not my area. Women, gender, power, um, empowerment, etc. is not my area. I work in the field of psychology. But how you can alienate yourself from a reality? After almost 40 years of your research, something banged uh, against you and you like to talk about it in a slightly different way. And this was the, this is my third presentation. I cannot present it in my university. They don't give me for I'm very grateful to Dr. Mishra. And he is also very reluctant to provide me. He has reasons. He doesn't know me. This is the first time I've come to this institute. I make my presentation so beautiful for the people that they can't miss it. This is because there is a need to realize something immediate. Rape is that. And ancient history, rape was property crime. Look how we define it. And we categorize it according to the areas in which the time periods, the historic, the methodological, and all those things which are related to that. In the middle, people ask about it. This is what happens. This is what happens right at the place where we see the frame. Madam, Abhis uh, Mulliji, you've never seen it. Yeah. It's a very interesting kind of uh, situation that the people who are unarmed, they were agitating to bring uh, just to bring to justice to these people and they were cannon charged by the police. We have a kind of disillusionment, a relationship between the people who have to enforce and the people who are requesting them to enforce and you force use force against those people who are telling you please use force to catch the killers and the killers are not available. To this is what happened. Beliefs in the family. Perception of sexual crimes. Why it happens? Because why the girl was there? We always ask the question to those people. There is a belief in the family, honor, and sexual purity. We kill our daughters. Even yesterday we had a news. We kill our daughters, I do not know why. Ideologies of male sexual entitlement. Every male has a kind of brutal belief that I am entitled. Why do you feel that you are entitled? And then weak legal sanctions and no legal sanctions. So we revised, we made a new code, we have made a new act. Again, that boy who created the biggest crime against that girl is out in the street. He has been in the parole or wherever he went for two years and then he was let off. We can't do anything with this. This is the system in which we are working. 
and you feel so helpless. I don't feel helpless because I am a teacher. I feel I can communicate my feelings to the people and they will take the charge from me. This is prevention. We call about life skill and other educational programs, gender balanced parenting. Our women centers have been doing it for the last so many years. Community activism by men. Sometimes men also try to take this cudgels on this issue. Uh, it's not between men and women. Yesterday somebody commented about it. Today again it was commented about it. It's not social science versus science. It's together. It's not men versus women. It's together that we have to sort it out. And legal and policy responses. And the, what I'm trying to do is the sensitization for the people who are already very well sensitized. I can imagine it. That you people don't need this education. But you have never seen it like this. Why I'm saying it? Because I'm not proud of it. I'm a little anguished. I wanted to share it with the people. Prevention straight from the mind. It's like a victim blaming. It's so easy. Why that girl asked for the lift? In a sane, civilized place, people do ask for the lift. Just word theory. Everywhere it happens. And then it happens in India, it happens anywhere in the world. And somebody who was a minister in one state, a chief minister somewhere else, and the, about the agitation, the, doc, the son of the president of India made some comments talking about their attitude towards a rape and the agitation later with. They don't feel agitated. They think differently. Why? Honor killings, forced marriages. Even uh, Hyderabad is very famous for that. I don't know how you react to it. If I were a Muslim, I'll react differently. I would be Muslim, I would be reacting differently. And I want that, I should be Muslim for that purpose. Gender rule. We have to assign this girl and that boy. Our toys, our mythology, our systems, our plays, our schools have a place that this is separate. Even seating wise will be like this. And stereotypes are so dangerous to have. And uh, those you can't change unless you change your own mind. Somebody else's mind is so easy to change, you can write a report and tell people that please do it. No, if you can change your own mind, it makes a difference. This is women's sake. Some of the girls and the boys. The boys will have wives. The boys will have their sisters. Boys will have their mother. And tomorrow they are going to have their daughters. I think it's one which we must give to our children who are girls, feeling conscious of one's own destiny, that you are supposed to take care of it. Being gutsy, free and un unencumbered, but responsible. Take care of yourself. Many times people have comments about the dress. I don't know. I've seen with my own eyes uh, people trying to enter the great basilica in Rome. The not moral police. The police came and they said, you can't go with these shots into the religious place. If this can happen in Christianity, I think we have to take care of it. It's not just begotten Hinduism or begotten Muslim or Islam or anything. No. There's a kind of looking at yourself, how people will look at you. It's important. Ladies and gentlemen must look what they want to look. Having greater control over one's own life. Don't let others dictate you. This is for women. 90% of decisions are made by somebody else. Somebody else who is very important. Only pays for you or who has given you birth. No. You are you. Being aware and alert. I tell you one of the best suggestions which was given by somebody in Malaysia was please don't carry big bags because they are snatched. Don't wear this tops because somebody is going to take it away. But wear it and then you will be very careful. Understanding ground reality. Where are you walking? Where are you going? Which place you are going? Coming out of male shadows. Very difficult. Male shadows are too long. I wish some ma males come into the women's shadows. Understand what a woman is. A woman might be their own mother. No. Rehabilitation, developing ego strength is a psychological process. I cannot define the whole of it. It takes about a few minutes to make it. My time is very limited. I am uh, very grateful to Dr. Visha and uh, more so to Dr. Deshpande.
life cycle stage. There are stages in which we are more vulnerable. A four-year girl, when she is raped, what should be your answer to that boy who has done it? Which stage? 94 year old woman raped. How do you react to all this? Medical legal services have to be provided. A very strong social support system has to be provided to the people who are very close to coming out of it. Coming out of this shock is impossible. Nobody can come out of this trauma. I tell you honestly. You meet a girl, she will tell you no, it's not possible. We had a boxer, the world famous boxer. He killed one guy in a, with a box and after that he could not go to, into the arena for boxing. He said, whenever I go there, I see one opponent and that guy coming into the arena. If in the boxing, in the game, this can happen, I think in life, nothing can happen worse than that. Isn't it the high time we realize our responsibility? It's amazing, when I'm addressing them a little more, this is the police of Punjab police, the very famous Punjab police. They can catch a guy who has stolen only a pup and get an endorsement that I admitted, I admitted, I took away an elephant. Very effective police. How effective they are? This girl happens to be a girl and she's facing two strong policemen. And when the judges said, after seeing this picture in the newspaper, that please, we want to provide you security, she said, I don't want security from Punjab police. There is a category in the police. I don't know what is your uh, police in Andhra Pradesh or Telangana. But I know ITBP is more reliable. There are kind of classes, how we train them. If man endures as an undeserved punishment, why should women accept it as a natural heritage? We see it is a good thing, but it is a good thing. You have to say that you are a good How do you define it? How do you think that it's possible to accept it? And you talk about, uh, this is a very great country in which we have been having a debate and no political party is agreeing on even only 33%. Look at the percentage of people who are representing us in various places. Local places, panchayat or wherever they are. Uh, for one, I said, please raise your demand. Just ask for 50%. You're a little more than 50% in that person. And we never ask, the girls are so timid. Even their leaders are so timid. We live in a society that teaches women to be careful, not to get raped, instead of teaching men. The issue is men not to rape. I was a four year old child. I learned from my mamaji, mamaji, you know, maternal uncle, how to abuse. Punjabi abuse is really beautiful. What you say is you really visual. And when that mamaji came, I greeted him with the same gali. My mother put me under her knee got a spoonful of red chilies, put it in my mouth and I've never repeated it until today. I'm a psychologist. I'm going to celebrate my 75th birthday on 1st October. I learned the hard way. Many of us learn only the hard way. That so-called counseling and polite talk and whatnot, it has its own place. For whom? Those who listen. Those who have capacity. Those who have got a heart. Probably they will not do that even. This was the salute which came much before Indian government did anything else. Why do we ask the government to do it? I mean, it's a very great pity. All the institutions want money from the government. And they can't generate it for themselves. But this question is, you know, repeated again and again. In the morning also we had the same question. We become so useless, nobody is ready to pay us. We go as beggars to our own government. Please do it. Mr. Kerry gave, gave us the, to that girl because she fought with them. And that's the reason we call her Nirbhaya. And John Kerry said, it's a, the courage and determination inspired me. What a man, thousands of kilometers away, not belonging to our culture, but he appreciates it. Little, little think about us, what we do to such people. Men are from Earth, <laughs> women are all from, are from Earth, and we need to know it. We always have said, segregated Mars, they live there and we live here. This is not the issue. A small little earth where we have to share and we are uh, becoming more and more and more in number. 
this is the kind of picture which I wanted to show you. This has appeared again and again. Or this is the, our favorite Bharat Mata. How much stabs she has got? How much killings she has taken? How much more do you think it should be done? This was the girl who died. The media doesn't have it. A friend of mine sent it from Singapore. He said, this is the girl. Can you imagine such a beautiful soul going away? And we are only having candles and repetition of annual birthday or death ceremonies. I want to talk immediately about a girl caught in a different way and one away. I want to tell you that the, the story around women is much greater than around men. This is a girl who is uh, in that part of the place, not Delhi, in a godforsaken part of pa Pakistan in which no school can be opened. But she defied. She said, I want to go to the school. <coughs> Lucky girl. <coughs> Weakness, fear and hopelessness died. Strength, power and courage was born. And that was Malala. Herself, speaking certain small things. And they have become like uh, beautiful words for each one of us. This is it when you get Nobel Prize. In India, a friend of mine got a Nobel Prize and a Nobel Prize was stolen. I wanted to write an email to him. You don't have to have it. You have to have it. That's enough. The spirit of being Nobel laureate is enough than to carry that medal. You, have to, you don't bear it every time. It's not a decoration. It's a recognition. It's a realization. It's a raising your standard to that level when people call you Nobel of it. Thank you very much. A wonderful talk. We talk a lot about our society, where we Lighting. what we are. You all see the good side of it. But I think you know you have dimensions where we have to improve a lot. India is a country, I think, we have a lot of time to understand. There are good things, they are not so good things. There are things about which we can't talk about. And I think this was one. But the whole thing there is that we have not created fear in the minds of people who commit these things. That's the only thing. If you can fear, if you can create fear in the minds of people and fear in the minds of people and come very assiduously and see that they are taken to task. I don't think such thing can happen. You talk about Pakistan, you talk about from other countries. I am sure that a couple of things I think we can take even from those countries. Those who go beyond the line, uh, we have to be very rigid. And we have to take an immediate action. We just can't give it to our judiciary because you can understand in the process of giving the judgment, justice, I think it becomes injustice. And I think this is one such case. Uh, so now, we move on, I think, uh, break for tea, or we can move on and then they will announce it. We go ahead with our session. Thank you. I said that I started with physics, physics honors, went to army, came back, did my MA econometrics, taught econometrics, computer programming for about 13 years, got into development economics, then into agriculture economics and finally ended up in agriculture economics at a very good level. When Professor Allard, Vaiki Allard and myself, we were honored as fellow of agriculture economics together. Professor Allard talked saying that how he did agriculture economics from his student days and I had no words. I said that from my student days I never did agriculture economics. But then there is some mistake that I am being honored with Professor Adal, which probably is something uh, amiss. I know I am going to take you at, uh, to a totally different level from the level at which uh, Professor had started. And the level was uh, quite different. We were all concerned about it. Each one of us were concerned. This doesn't happen in any world, not even in the animal world. Never in the animal world. Never. Have you, have you come across? Ask a zoologist. It can never happen in the animal world. So what are we? Are we animals? No, no, no. We are something beyond that. Beyond that. The rusted minds, we are beyond that. 
and from that level I have to get it to you to an excellent level. So I thought that it would have been better that we have, I, that's a high level, I am bringing you to you uh, to a very mundane level. I am doing an experiment and you are the scapegoats. The experiment is very simple. I want to talk to you about research methodology, but talk to you on the platform of WTO and agriculture. I was told that I should speak on WTO and agriculture, rusted area again and again. I talked about it 200, 2000 times, the same slides. So I deleted part, 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 part. That's something which is not necessary. I am going to talk to you about research methodology, given that some of you are working on WTO and agriculture. Now what is research methodology as such and I, I would say that and this is my uh, not patented but my own creation. I call it as ARC methodology, A-R-C. ARC methodology is survey. which we follow in research. I will speak about uh, 25 minutes. So that by 11 you are out, right? Are you, are you comfortable or do you want me to touch it? <laughs> it depends on your orders. Okay. It depends on your orders. Uh, 11 50. And I can stretch it to 11 30 also, no problem. Arc method of research. This is something which I used to teach, I said I used to teach economics and uh, computer programming at Isaac and every now and then these are the people who know economics, who know mathematics, who know computer. Hey, tell me how to merge that file with this file? The fellow is in he heavy demand. I said that you, can you lock the screen? There is an F key which locks the screen. It's very simple. So I have to ask, can you lock the screen? And these people are in very high demand, I was in very high demand, everyone used to come and ask. Sir, what method I should do? I want to use technology. What do I do? I was fed up. How do I tell? How do I tell? Then I made a few of my students to help me. Those days there were computer cards. And this, behind the computer cards, I made them to write EPW articles and the methodology in the EPW article used. I asked them from the Indian Journal of Agriculture Coins, Indian Economic Journal, and finally the cards became this big. And they were spread, 10 years article. They were spread in my hall like this. I wanted to find out, can I make some group which is not taught in the classroom of statistics, but <coughs> which is totally stemming out of <coughs> economics researchers' mind. About 5-15 days and the people who have worked was Ratna Reddy one who is who a professor at SES and then he has he is a director of an institute now. Under one the, <coughs> the students who worked on the cards, who wrote on the cards. Under one is a professor at uh, Madras School of Economics, Rajesh Purvet. Third one is retired professor from uh, the Kerala Institute, uh, Kerala uh, at, at Trishu, Jos. Jose, he is not, he is a, 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 a AM, he is AM Jose. Three of them, whole writing of the cards, and 15 days it was right. Finally, my mother threatened me that I am going to burn this tomorrow. What is this? You are not allowed to have to be used, it is not such for too long. That day, night, 2 o'clock, I got up and went round, round, made 10 groups, made 5 groups, and finally, I got 3. And these are the three groups. What is the pursuit of knowledge that we have in social sciences? And mind you, social sciences is the one which we learn from the day one in this life. Other sciences we learn afterwards. They are existing. Physics is existing somewhere. You have to go, go and learn in mathematics is existing. Zoology is existing, botany is existing, biology is existing, everything is existing somewhere else. This comes along with you social science. The moment the child is born, within the first week the child learns about the resource and resource supplier, the mother. 
and knows that this is the mother and that is not the mother. That's the stratification between the two. Then also comes to know this is my family and this is not my family, this is a stranger. From then onwards, the learning of social sciences begins and it begins automatically. So the method of acquiring knowledge begins with A, that is attributing a measurement or attribution of recognition to a particular phenomenon. That attribution of recognition to a particular phenomena is is borrowed in statistics by taking mean, mode, median, variance, this, that, and all. It is fine growth rates, your poverty indices, all indices, everything is attributing a measurement to a phenomenon. We attribute measurements. We attribute non-measurable qualities to extremely good, bad, abnormal, normal. We attribute all that. Then we come to the R. R is one of the famous things and the most often visited area of knowledge seeking. Not the R software. R is relation. R is relation. And this, why this is happening? Why the rapes are increasing? Why crimes against women are increasing? Then people give all sorts of explanations. And it's like that six people, six blind seeing the elephant. Each one gives their own explanation. What is it? And social phenomena are very uh, slimy. They are not easily captured. Because it changes over time, it changes over space. And the time and space changes are something which makes it very easily out of your hands. You are not able to capture it. There you get into the relational thing. And in the relational thing, you try to say that given these conditions, this particular thing happens. Professor Asadi, Professor Muzafar Asadi is a professor of political science, very close friend of mine, and we work on uh, the similar areas, agrarian relations. He also works on farmer suicide. I also work on farmer suicide. And there are many here in Hyderabad who also work on the area. And then we try to capture the phenomenon. We could not easily say that this is the one reason, or these are the two reasons, these are the five reasons. Every time our attempt was to explain why it happens. None of us, and at, at least I believe so, I am not satisfied as yet that I have caught the phenomena. No, I have Every time the reasons are different for me, for, for the only thing that in society everything changes by time. Varangal farmer is different than Yogmara farmer. Yogmara farmer is different than Shivava farmer. And the conditions, agrarian conditions in these regions are though in general similar, they are different at the bottom level. Similarly, the time also. The time also is varied. So it varies on two components. One is time and another space. Relationality is that. The third one is classification. 